Hi everyone, welcome sa channel natin. Ako pala si Janos ng Pinotech Dad. Today, pag-uusapan natin ang best na mid-range chipset na asahan nyo in 2023. And this is the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. So naalala nyo ba a few years ago, ang best chipset natin sa mid-range was the Snapdragon 720G. Napakarami pong smartphones ang gumamit ng Snapdragon 720G and then dumating rin yung successor nito na slightly improved na Snapdragon 732G. After that, nagulat na lang tayo na dumating na yung Snapdragon 778G na para sa akin is one of the best mid-range chipsets pa rin na available in the market. However, meron ng bagong magdi-disrupt sa market natin at least yan yung hope or pangarap natin. Dahil ang Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 ay nasa flagship level ng performance pero yung presyo niya mas malapit sa mid-range. So ano nga ba yung maasahan natin with the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2? Ano yung differences nito with the Snapdragon 778G? And gaano kalaki yung step up na makikita natin from a Snapdragon 720G papunta sa Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2? Yan po ang alamin natin sa video na to after this quick intro. Okay, so Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, ito po yung latest chipset na nilabas ni Qualcomm dito sa mid-range segment. And sa totoo lang guys, nagulat talaga ako dito. Una kong nakita to with the Poco F5, pero nandito na rin sa atin itong Realme GT Neo 5 SE na meron ding same chipset. And so far, masasabi ko lang sa inyo guys is that asahan nyo na ang flagship performance pagdating sa chipset sa to. And hopefully, mas dumami pa yung mga phones na gumamit ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. Pero syempre, diretso na tayo sa performance. Ano ba yung maasahan natin pagdating sa benchmark? So, simulan natin with the Antutu benchmark. So, makakaasa kayo with the Antutu benchmark version 9. Aabot tayo ng 950,000 Antutu benchmark points on the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. And if we kukumpara natin yan sa Snapdragon 778G, kung saan nakakakuha tayo ng usually nasa 500,000 Antutu benchmark points, ay yeah, aabot ng almost 76% ang improvement pagdating sa performance. Napakalaking leap po noon pagdating sa isang mid-range na chipset. Paano naman yung mga users na naka Snapdragon 720G pa rin? Gaano nga ba kalaki yung performance gap na makikita natin? Well, it's almost 3 times the performance boost. So kung sa Snapdragon 720G nakakakuha tayo ng 350,000 na tutu benchmark points, Madadagdagan po yan ng almost 600,000 ng Tutu benchmark points pagdating sa Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. And mararamdaman nyo talaga yung performance boost kung sakali mang mag-upgrade na kayo from your old 720G na phone up to the Poco F5 or the Realme GT Neo 5 SE. As in magugulat kayo sa flagship performance na makukuha nyo sa mga mid-range phones na to. Pagdating naman sa 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test na ginawa natin, makikita nyo na very consistent yung performance ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 both on the Poco F5 and the Realme GT Neo 5 SE. As in, stable na stable siya. Wala po tayo makikita na throttling or pagbaba ng performance after the prolonged test na ginawa natin. And pagdating naman sa CPU throttling test, While meron tayong hiccup na na-experience with the Poco F5 with its latest na update, eh so far parang bumabalik na sa normal yung performance ng CPU throttling test even though wala pa tayong bagong update. So I'm not sure what's going on here kasi before naging consistent na bumababa sa CPU throttling test yung performance down to 59% of the maximum performance na Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 dito sa Poco F5 but now we're going back to the 80% level dito sa Poco F5. So I'm not sure kung ano nangyari but hopefully this gets fixed pa talaga para maabot natin yung makikita natin with the Realme GT Neo 5 na above 80% yung CPU throttling test performance nito. Na merong above 80% of maximum performance sa CPU throttling test. Pero guys, yung CPU throttling test and other benchmarks na ginagawa natin, eh half of the story lang po yan. Ang other half of the story is testing how good the performance is pagdating sa gaming. Maganda nga ba yung thermal performance? And also, the FPS na makukuha natin consistently with the Poco F5 and the Realme GT Neo 5 SE. And so far, from the gaming test na nagawa ko on both devices, 
Sobrang consistent na performance. Pagdating sa FPS drops, meron po talaga tayong mapapansin sa Genshin Impact for prolonged hours on both phones. But this is something that we can expect from any kind of phone naman talaga pagdating sa Genshin Impact dahil mahirap po talaga patakbuhin yung game na to. Now, pagdating sa less demanding games, of course, dun yung makikita talaga yung consistent frame rates. Mapa Mobile Legends man yan, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, or other games that you play. Basta hindi siya kasing bigat ng Genshin Impact, makikita nyo na very consistent yung frame rates na makukuha nyo on the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na mga phones. However, when I say na flagship level performance ang makukuha nyo with the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, hindi po ibig sabihin eh katumbas na nito yung Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Siyempre, mas malakas pa rin yung GPU nun. And kung heavily reliant or heavily driven by the GPU yung isang game, eh syempre, hindi natin matatapatan yung performance nun. Pero for most of the games, masasabi ko talaga na nasa flagship tier yung performance ng GPU nito even though it has a lower frequency then the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. At syempre guys, ka-partner ng flagship level performance, asahan nyo rin na maganda yung image processing na makukuha nyo with the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 compared to the previous mid-range chipsets na Snapdragon 720G at Snapdragon 778G dahil sa better ISP or image signal processor. So pag kinumbine ng brands yung Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 Plus a really good image sensor. Eh talagang maasahan nyo na maganda yung image processing na makukuha natin whether it's with the photos or videos. At panghuli sa upgrades na maasahan nyo sa Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 versus the previous mid-range chipsets, eh meron na tong 4 nanometer chipset compared to the 8 nanometers on the Snapdragon 720G or the 6 nanometer fabrication ng Snapdragon 778G. So ano nga ba ibig sabihin yan para sa mga average consumers natin? Well, it means na meron tayong mas power efficient na chipset. Ibig sabihin, mas magtatagal yung battery natin. Kumbaga, mas konting energy yung kakailanganin ng phone na to compared sa the same task on your previous mid-range devices. So you can expect better power management, better battery life, sa mga chipsets na merong 4 nanometer na fabrication. So in the end, panalo na naman tayo mga consumers if magtuloy-tuloy yung production ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na mga devices. However, meron lang akong konting rumors na nasagap na baka hindi nila ituloy-tuloy pala itong Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. So there are rumors na yung Gen 3 na version ng Snapdragon 7 series ay baka mas mahina na or the same level with the Snapdragon 778G. So, babalik ulit tayo dun sa 500,000 and 22 benchmark points na level for the mid-range segment next year. Or, I don't know, kung kailan man nila i-release yung Gen 3. <sighs> it's a sad thing. And the reason for that is medyo expensive daw yung cost ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na i-produce. So, I don't know. But let's all cross our fingers na sana i-rumor lang po talaga yan at hindi maging totoo. Dahil para sa akin, sobrang solid na development na meron tayong Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 from what we had just a few years ago with the Snapdragon 720G. Sobrang laki na po ng improvements sa mid-range chipsets if you compare them from a few years ago. So this is really great for us consumers. Pero kung magkatotoo man yung rumor na yon, then you guys should really check out the Poco F5 or the Realme GT Neo 5 SE na yan pa lang yung dalawang phones na merong Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na mid-range ang pricing na pwede nyo makuha ngayon sa market and ililink ko po yan sa description box just in case na ganahan na kayong bumili ng Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na phones. So hopefully may natutunan kayo sa video na to at na-enlighten kayo tungkol sa Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 and yung kakayahan nito. And kung may mga katanungan pa kayo, itanong nyo lang po yan sa comment section at susubukan ko pong sagutin yan as best as I can. At kung gusto mong pang manood ng mga videos ko, may mga ililink po ako dyan, panigurado magugustuhan nyo rin po yan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad, kita-kita ulit tayo.